Oh man, now I have to bring up my biggest mistake in Airsoft, which believe it or not is not buying a SEMA. Welcome to the US Airsoft review of the CMO48, aka the SEMA AK-74. I got a lot of requests to go over this one, and since I had it for quite a while now, this should be easy to go over. Also, links to where you can find all the parts that make up this piece will be in the description below if you wish to find anything you see here for yourself. Now let me explain why I set up this AK the way I have with some honest truth. Most of you know that I'm a bit of a seasonal gamer who does like to play Call of Duty Black Ops as all the weapons in that title are favored by my tastes and make for good conversation when I want to show off some weapon knowledge to my friends who couldn't care any less. But whenever I wouldn't use the Galil in any layout I possibly could make, the AK-47 was always second in my class. This is where fiction and reality starts to kick in though. I knew that the setup I liked in game would be long in real life, but now I have it and it stands taller than any other piece of my collection. But let's see what makes up my AK. For the rather large suppressor that has been given many different names by other players, I would have the Mad Bull PVS-4 that ran me about $65. Next would be the outrageously large magazines which imitate the in-game extended magazines. These would be the Magbrand 180 round RPK midcaps which I got in a set for 5 for $65 as well, but can be found in singles by Matrix for $14 each. And of course you'll need a SEMA AK-74 to put those pieces to any good use. These can easily be found on most major online retailers as SEMA AKs are some of the most common sellers. I got my for about $170 on Airsoft GI many months ago. The seam itself features a stamp steel body that is quite sturdy and pleasing to the eye, while the real wood stock which your battery connections are located and wood handguard highlight this piece. Which does feel great but could be of better quality, but is completely reasonable for the price paid. When it comes to sights, you shouldn't find anything super amazing as they are very minimalistic like the real thing, however they are both adjustable for windage and elevation which shouldn't be needed anyway since we normally don't go for targets several hundred yards away. One thing I would say that bugs me about this AK is that the battery connections are located in the stock. This bothers me since you have all this room under the dust cover for a stick type battery, but you still have to remove two small screws from the butt plate to get into your connections. And I can see that the screws can be lost very easily if you're not 100% careful with them. Also if I can be real with you, the hop up can be a bit of a pain, as if you pull back the charging handle to alter it, there's a likelihood when you let it go, the hop up adjuster can just get pushed forward by rubbing against the back of the charging handle. Moving to the suppressor I would say that it is very sturdy and made of very strong metals, but it does seem to be very attracted to dirt and dust which can give it a good look I think, but it can be washed off if you wish to do so. The suppressor can also be broken down into three pieces, which is a bit nifty, and this ring does bear some Russian characters which I by no way know what they stand for and will not pretend I do. Something that is a bit odd about the suppressor however is that the base where it threads onto the rifle can rotate freely. This isn't a huge problem, but just weird that it was designed like this. Also due to its obvious girth, you will have a front heavy rifle as the can is about two pounds. And finally when it comes to the magazines I chose to run with, we have these orange monsters. These Magbrand midcaps hold up to 180 rounds supposedly, but I don't load them over 120 as BBs like to double stack in them. You will notice that these are quite larger than normal AK or AK variant magazines as they were intended for RPKs, but the look they give off is just fitting for this already comically ridiculous AK. But one point that should be made on these is that this base plate will almost always be slipping on and off, but this is easily fixed with some super glue which is quite common to find in my Hispanic household. Now there's not much more I can say about this rifle as I don't own the box anymore and that the fuse that is blown out still needs to be removed and rewired. However, if there's a SEMA variant that you'd like for us to go over and review fully that can also be found on airsoftstation.com, you can go ahead and request it in the comments below. Also, if you have any further questions about this AK, go ahead and ask them in the comments as well. But until I answer all your questions, and until that next video drops, I'll be sure to see you all next time.